Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's Dark Avengers comic book review. We've gone through Marvel, we've gone through the Independence. Now we're at the point of the show where I'm sure all of you are most curious. We're in DC Comics where they're still launching their number ones. And we got a bunch of number ones this week actually. Starting with, um... Okay, just get this over with, get this over with. Superboy number one. First of all, Superboy's not a machine like the cover shows. He's an actual clone of... Superman and a bunch of other people, they claim they threw a bunch of DNA into Superboy to making him him. Here's what I don't understand though, and here's what the huge pop plot hole is. If Superboy is being created just now, like literally, what they're saying in this issue is this Superboy in this new DC Universe was just created now. He did not exist any earlier than now. So the question is then, if the death of Superman happened, then that means the rain happened because the rain brought Superman back. So, what happened to this? If Superboy is being just created now, what happened during the reign of the Superman? Was there no Superboy? But Superboy played a pretty big part in the reign of the Superman. And it had huge ramifications on the entire DC Universe. So, no offense, but I think the writers are making too many weird, especially in Superman's case, plot holes. They want this to exist, this happened, but this didn't happen because of this, but if that didn't happen because of that, then how did the death happen if it, it, it's a plot hole. It's a huge plot hole that'll have you sitting there and thinking for a while. How did Superman die and come back then? How was he return? They're gonna redo the, the, the uh, rain? No, the death happened. So people who go back and buy the death and the and the funeral and then the rain and then the return, they're going to see Superboy and they're going to be like, but wait, as far as the new DCU goes, Superboy is just being created now. How is that possible? Easy. Plot hole. Major plot hole. Another plot hole with the death of Superman is the fact that Lois does not know Superman is, is Clark Kent. But that's a plot hole that kind of can get looked over just a little bit. And certain characters not being there also can be looked over. This can't. This is ridiculous. So anyway, the artwork on the inside is a lot better than the cover art. I can say that. The story is definitely not something any of you guys, if you've been reading Superboy, will be used to at all. Basically, they, they want to kill Superboy at first, the clone. And he breaks free, and they decide, okay, since he got free, we're going to keep him. And so they have him living his life in a virtual world. Basically, he's living in a virtual reality system where he's living on a farm in a small town, and Rose Wilson makes an appearance. I'm trying to find a good... Yeah, I'll, I'll use this face. Rose Wilson, who is Wade Wilson's daughter, makes an appearance. Turns out she's not a hologram, though. She's actually one of the soldiers, and you find that out. She's one of the agents of nowhere because she actually is outside of the virtual reality world as well. And this redhead woman is really interest is very connected to Superboy. I, I forgot her name. I'm sorry. She's a new character, and I'm just I don't know. I, I her name is completely out of my mind at the moment. He calls her Red, though. And so they take him out. There's somebody in the Nowhere Agency who actually has a connection to Lois Lane. I guess this is where it's going to connect into Superman a bit. And he wants to tell her what's going on at Nowhere, you know, the blow, so that people blow the whistle on Nowhere and prevent this Superboy from being used. They're using him basically as a weapon for the government or for their own use. He's going to be used as a weapon. And, um... They take Superboy out of the virtual world, and she's not too happy about it. There's this guy who is, the, he's called Templar. Assassin's Creed reference much. He looks like freaking Doc Ock. A younger version of Doc Ock. And he's going to stick Superboy on a superhero team. And gee, I wonder what superhero team they're going to stick him on. Yeah. Um... He looks evil. He does not look like himself at all. And, um, I don't see, I, after issue two, I don't see myself really coming back. 
I really don't see myself coming back. Just for the simple fact that I'm too hooked on the way they had Superboy, how they developed him literally through 1993 to 2011. They developed that character so well and so much that this new Superboy that's been created literally in current day, like he was literally created this year, um, so far it's not flying, but I'm on the fence. So I'm not dropping it, but I'm on the fence. Mind you, I'm going to be on the fence with... Probably 99% of the Superman books that come out because they're all changing and that's the one comic series that I'm a die-hard fan of. So, yeah, I'm going to be on the fence until I see it doing, in my standards, good. Which would have been if DC didn't relaunch it. A new book, Grifter, number one. Okay, his name is Cole Cash and he is a... Swindler. Basically, he cheats businessmen out of money with his friend, I forget her name, oh my, Gretchen. How could I forget that name? Gretchen. And she's already out of the country, and he's on his way to go to her with the suitcase of money that he just swindled this businessman out of until he gets abducted. By who? We don't know. All they show us, uh, you guys saw it through the preview, but I'm going to show it again anyway, he gets abducted by this being. We don't know what this being is, but they want to assimilate him basically because they've assimilated certain human beings. Because if you watch the very, if you start from the very beginning of the issue, he's on an airplane on his way to. Um, oh, you know, why can't I remember? I don't know. He's on an airplane from New Orleans to go to this place, and um, it turns out these people are linked to him in in his mind. And they're trying to kill him. First, it, there were two people on the plane. First, it was a woman. Then it was one of the um, flight attendant, one of the pilots, I believe. And their their mission is to kill him. He kills the woman. The the and then he tries to jump out of the plane. But the the pilot is the one that um, actually pushes him out. And. Yeah, basically, he's on the run from the law. And he survives the fall. The pilot doesn't. And it turns out he wasn't just... Uh, he thought he was out for only 17 hours. It turns out he, was, uh, he wasn't out for 17 hours. He was out for 17 days. And Gretchen thinks he screwed her. So she's going to the police, I believe, with who he is because they think he's a terrorist because he killed that woman on the plane and he claimed he was going to blow the plane up to get himself off the plane to safety. So she's about to go to the police to screw him. And it turns out his brother is part of a military... Um, let's just say he's part of the military or special, special ops age, um, agent. Special ops, let's say that. So now his brother want, has to stop him and take him out of the public eye. This alien wants to kill him and destroy him because he's a threat to them now. So now basically he's daring them to come after him and the Grifter is born. So basically they redid an origin story for the Grifter, I believe. I don't know who the Grifter... Uh, I don't really, you know... I never read the Grifter until this point, so I guess they're retelling the Grifter story. So I don't know who he is, so I can't say for people who read Grifter if it's the same or not. I liked it. I'm coming back for a second issue just to see what's next. Because origin stories usually start off slow. They started off kind of slow. Like, he's not really... I don't believe he's really there yet as far as being the Grifter. I believe the next issue is where things are going to pick up a bit. So, we'll see. Okay, now this book was supposed to be Amber's. And I'm going to have her review it in the next episode also. But I felt... I was going to, uh, I read it anyway because it's the number ones and I want to keep all the number ones in the same week as much as possible. Um, and since it's only one book, I'm sure she's not going to mind because I don't think she would have really enjoyed this anyway. It's called Suicide Squad. And it starts off with the Suicide Squad being tortured by people we don't know who, but they're wearing scarecrow masks. And all they want to know is who they are, who got them together. You know, they want the information. Who are you guys? Who is who leads you guys? And um, they're being tortured, basically, to tell um, these people who you don't know who they are, who their commanding officer is, and why 
what they're the name of their who they are basically and then you get an origin story from each of the seven people except for the seventh actually when we get to the seventh guy it turns out that um, he breaks he cracks under the pressure and he tells the whole story that they basically were all um, um, what do you call it? in Bell Reeve they were in there for life uh, this person came along and decided to call them on paper they call it Task Force X but the real name their real name is Suicide Squad they have these bombs injected in their neck so if they decide that's to keep them basically in line because they are criminals after all and then he was explaining their first mission and um, up to when they got caught so it turns out he gets dragged away and he disappears the rest of the team gets knocked out they wake up they still got bags on their head and, and the people like this is your last chance is Amanda Waller the person who's leading you none of them crack so it turns out in the end spoiler it's a huge test the whole issue was them going through a test to prove that they won't crack under pressure they won't reveal the name of their their basically they have to be willing to die if they're caught without divulging any information about the team their leader or their mission and Amanda Waller is no longer a fat bitch. She's a thin bitch. And their first mission, and this is why I might not be coming back for a third issue. I'm coming back for the second. She's dropping them on a, um, oh, what's it called? Magnodome, and they have to kill all 6,000 people, 60,000 people inside. And the last picture is them falling off into the stadium. To be continued. And there's going to be a casualty, apparently, in the Suicide Squad. Now, I don't know if the reason they're killing the people in this dome is because they're crazy psychopaths or just because this woman wants to see them kill. I don't know. If these are innocent people they're killing, that'll be the last issue I buy. For right now, I'm on the fence with this as well. Nothing to drop, really, this week. I was very pleased with what I read from DC this week. Green Lantern, number one. Sinestro is now a Green Lantern. And Hal Jordan is stuck on Earth, trying to reacclimate into human life. Him and Carol have a couple of moments. She's willing to hire him back at Ferris Air, but not as a pilot because he's too much of a um, liability and she'll lose her insurance. So, uh, basically, the Guardians leave Sinestro alone. They say, the ring chose you. We're not going to kill you or anything, but we're going to give you a shot and just go off and do what Green Lantern is supposed to do. Gantha says, are you guys crazy? And they're like, our minds must be one. And they like do this weird bonding thing to be continued, I guess, with the Guardians because that's the last we see of them. Once again, Hal Jordan, there's a funny moment where he thinks his girl is being beaten up by a guy and it turns out it was a movie, uh, like a movie shooting, and he ends up in jail. It seems like life is hell if, if Hal Jordan isn't a Green Lantern. And Sinestro goes to Kogar... Karugar? I want to say Karugar. To see how his people are, and it turns out that his core has enslaved the entire um, planet. And uh, one of the core men who was keeping watch on the planet finds him and calls him a traitor because he's a Green Lantern now. And he actually de destroys one of his own rings. I, I wonder if he's going to make it his mission to destroy the Sinestro Corps at some point. Which would kind of be messed up. Too many people want to see Sinestro stay as a Green Lantern. Me, for one, I'd rather go back to the Sinestro Corps and become like some type of weird anti-hero something. So anyway, he runs off. So Hal Jordan and Carol Ferris are having like this um, romantic dinner. And it all looks like he's going to propose to Carol again, like they're going to get back together. And he does the stupidest thing. I, I swear to God, they really wrote him as an, a real asshole or a real moron. Or a bum. I would say a bum in this book. He asks her to co-sign a lease so he can drive, so he can get a car. And she gets pissed off and storms off and says, You know what? You've been, you've been away. You've been out of world for too long. You're beyond out of touch for, um, um, with everyday life. And she just drives off and he ends up having to walk home. And huge spoiler here. Sinestro comes to him with an ultimatum. If you want your ring back, you'll do everything I say to be continued. Why do I have a feeling by this time next year, uh, we're going to see Hal Jordan with the Green Lantern ring? I have no idea about Sinestro or, never, or anything, but at least Hal Jordan will have his ring back. I'll be happy. By the way, this is the variant cover by Greg Capello. Um, really evil-looking Sinestro. I like this one. I, I, I really wasn't happy with it at first that I got this one, but 
I don't know. I guess it's a cover that grows on you. Now, it goes with the ring. The ring did not come with the comic book. I just wore it because I was really stoked about this issue since it was announced literally a half a year ago. Red Lanterns, number one. Atrocitus gives another... For the new readers, this is jump on friendly. Green Lantern is also awesome, but not jump on friendly. There's nobody, you will not understand. Let me actually do this real quick. Jump on friendly is Suicide Squad, Grifter, and Superboy because it's a brand new Superboy. It's not the Superboy that I, w I had been reading since 1990, uh, since the, he was his um, debut in 93. Grifter's a retelling, and Suicide Squad is, a, is a, also a, a start over point. Green Lantern, however, is not. If you've been reading Green Lantern right along, this book continues from where it left off, really. Nothing, for the most part, has been changed. Blackest Night still happened. Everything, according to Green Lantern history, has gone on so far. How Jordan was Parallaxed, the Sinestro Cold War, nothing has changed. It's continuing on, except it's now renumbered again, but it's continuing on from where the War of the Green Lanterns left off. Uh, Sinestro is a Green Lantern now. Uh, Kyle Rayner is going to be doing the Guardians of the Green, La Green Lantern Guardi uh, New Guardians and the core is still going to be the core except now um, Guy Gardner is back with the core. That's the only difference. But that would, would have been the difference also if the, if the uh, DCU continued. Now the Red Lanterns also it's a good jump on point for people who want to know who Atrocitus is and what's going on but there are points in this book where people are going to be like when did that happen? How did that happen? And you're going to have to go back in the Green Lantern books. So Green Lantern still is stuck with the huge amount of history, but not so huge. You'd only have to go back to about 2004 when, when Hal Jordan came back uh, from the dead, when he was resurrected as a Green Lantern again, and Parallax became the entity of the Yellow Rings, etc., etc. So you wouldn't have to go too far back. You don't have overwhelming history like from the 80s to catch you up to Green Lantern. You can basically start in the year 2004 or whenever Green Lantern came back, how Jordan came back up to this point, and you'd be fine. I, I believe Green Lantern only made it to like 86. So this is like 87, no, it was, in the, it was in the late 80s, maybe 89 or 88. So this is like 89 or 90. So really you're not too, this is 89 or 90, so you're not that far off. You just have to go back a couple of years. So anyway, you get a backstory on Atrocitus again. His, the Red Lantern, there's also in the very, very beginning, a nice splash page of my favorite now Red Lantern, Dexter. I love Dexter. I really did. That one shot, that, that one episode with that little story at the end about Dexter, it made me fall in love with the character. Basically, now the Red Lanterns are handing justice uh, the way they see fit in the universe. And, uh, unfortunately, though, the... Red Lanterns aren't really afraid of Atrocitus anymore. They're not willing to follow his orders. And Bleez is the first one that actually, when he says, you're not meant, uh, Atrocitus says, you're not meant to think, you're meant to follow my orders. She's like, orders? And she walks off laughing at him. And the other Red Lanterns look at him, and he's like, I don't see the fear in their eyes anymore. <clears throat> and then you get the long history about Atrocitus' past, and uh, what happened to Krona. And then there's a story about an old man who passes away, um because he gets mugged and one of the brothers gets pissed off at the younger brother for not being there because he was doing a thesis so uh, Atrocitus is now looking for a reason to continue on because his rage is gone his rage was um, caused by Krona because Krona is the one that had his entire planet erased from existence by the Manhunters so now that Krona is dead Atrocitus like has no he has no reason to be enraged anymore. He has no purpose in his mind anymore. So he uses he uses uh, Krona's blood, and he asks the universe, "What is what is my what? Where do I go from here? What does the universe have for me?" And he gets all these visions of different planets that are in need of help and stuff. And he's like, uh, "My fire rages once more. I see the path I must take. The universe's rage is now my rage." So basically. He's going to become like a, I'm trying to find the word, I shall punish those who deserve retribution. I shall be an instrument of vengeance. And he's like, but to do that, I'm going to need my core. And it turns out Bleez is turning the core against Atrocitus because she's like rage against Yamin. I, I hope I said that right. Yasmalt, uh, rage, rage at Atrocitus to be continued. Really heavy stuff. Love it. 
From the first issue, I could say I'll be around for Red Lantern for a long time. And because there has been no change to Green Lantern, I will be around Green Lantern. These are absolute yeses for today. Also, finally this week, another absolute yes. Batman and Robin, number one. Michael's even saying yes. Michael, you read this book, so you know. Dick Grayson's no longer Batman. But Damian Wayne is still Robin, because now Tim Drake is Red Robin. And I don't think that Batman's going to insult his son and tell him, screw you, Tim's going to come back as Robin. So now it's a, it's, a, it's a father and son thing. Okay, fine. I am overly cool with that. Whatever. You want to do that? I actually was hoping for that for a while. Because Damian Wayne's one cold-hearted son of a... Okay, well, Damian Wayne's a really cold little bastard. And he needs, ba he needs Bruce to... Um, to to knock them into shape. I love the pole scene, by the way. Epic little beginning there where they slide down the poles. I like that. So they're going to go out on patrol. But first, it's the anniversary of his parents' death, so they go to Crime Alley, which, spoiler alert, is going to be knocked down and paved over, and it's going to be built up for the new... Uh, I forgot how Batman said it. It's the first and last time that uh, Damian Wayne's going to be there because Crime Alley is basically going to be... Um, it's going to be bulldozed and brought back to life for the working people with dreams. That's what he says. So from now on, Batman says he's not going to be focusing on the death of his parents, but the anniversary of their um, their wedding anniversary is now going to be a thing that he celebrates. And he makes a paper boat out of the Zorro uh, pamphlet from the um, the play that him and his parents went to that day, and floated and he floats it off into the darkness of the sewer. Of course, Robin. Uh, Damien just doesn't understand it. He's, like, he's contradicting everything Batman's saying and saying it's a sign of weakness, you shouldn't mourn, they're dead, whatever, move on. And then something's going on at, a, at Gotham University. Uh, some people are stealing some reactor cores. Love the splash page, by the way. And Batman and Robin pop in to stop them. Three get away, and Robin doesn't listen to Batman, uh, to Bruce at all. He's like, Bruce says, don't follow them, he follows them. Then later on he says, do not attempt to board, repeat, do not attempt to board. He already boards it, and he slices the um, wire. They're on some type of, uh, oh, what's it called? A, um, I can't remember what they're in. They're in a sphere, let's call it that. But Batman can't follow up to Damien or them because there's a puncture in the um, containment water, in where the containment water is. So it's up to Batman to fill it, and then fill the hole and then fill the containment field up with water again or else there's going to be a huge explosion. It's going to be like a nuclear explosion. So above him is a pool. So he ends up filling the hole, blows the pool out, sends the pool into the um, reactor, everything. Disaster averted. But the people, unfortunately, thanks to Damien cutting the power, they had reactors on their backs. Yeah, they didn't make it. And there's a huge confrontation between him and Damien. And Damien's like, I don't get it. Dick, trust me, why can't you? He says, you have to earn mine. And he's like, how long will that take? A while. And in the very beginning of the book, I, I forgot to mention this, uh, somebody's against the Bat uh, Batman Incorporated, so he ends up taking out the Batman of Russia, the Russian Batman, I want to say. I'm guessing it's the Russian Batman, because I think it was in Russia. I don't know, but he's some type of a phantom. Reminds me of the guy from uh, The Ghost, from the Iron Man series. So in the very last page, you see him erasing the Russian Batman. Yeah, it says Moscow. The Russian Batman from existence. And he's like, the new global circus act of his has to end. Next, I pay a visit to Bruce Wayne to be continued. So this guy basically wants to erase Batman Incorporated. I'll be honest with you. I was happy with one Batman. I was really, I really was. But apparently this guy can't do it because there's Batwing now, so he can't really do that. Also, there's an advertisement for Resurrection Man. There are three books I ordered that were number ones that I did not initially put down on my list. But due to very good reviews, uh, I will be getting them. I'll tell you guys that in a second. Awesome artwork. I love how they're doing this with Batman and Robin. The chemistry between Damian Wayne and Bruce Wayne is so thick. It's like the tension is so thick. Bruce Wayne is going to have a long, 
hard road with Damien. But I believe in the end he's going to be able to get through to Damien finally because Dick was not getting through to Damien. I read a few books with Dick Grayson and Damien. They would they work good together, but I think Bruce Wayne is going to be the one that actually molds Robin and Damien Wayne into a better person because Damien Wayne's still a cold-hearted bastard. I loved it. Now, three books that have been getting huge hypes from the three weeks, as a matter of fact. It's been three, no, it's been two weeks, actually. From the two weeks, uh, Animal Man has gotten a huge hype. So I did buy myself an Animal Man number one. Unfortunately, though, it cost me, let's say, double the price for Animal Man because it sold out everywhere, and the only store that was selling it was selling it on Amazon, and you had to pay a little bit extra. Whatever. Batwoman, number one, got a huge um, ovation on uh, a few comic review sites. So I decided to grab that just to see how it started, but I hear that you still have to have the backstory for Batwoman, but eh, I'll give it a shot. Finally, Resurrection Man. The way DC Comics promoted Resurrection Man was retarded. From their promo, I didn't want it. From the promo, from what certain reviewers said, also from a few of my uh, people, like my friends on the internet that I talked to, where they explained Resurrection Man better, now I'm interested in knowing more about Resurrection Man. So I got Resurrection Man. Resurrection Man and Batwoman I got for their, their asking price, thank God. Animal Man was the only one that was like out of the way. I had to actually ask, pay extra money for Animal Man. But you know what? If the series works out good, I'll be glad I spent the extra money. All right, ready guys? Here we go. First with DC, the number ones. Batman and Robin number one was awesome. I would absolutely say check it out. Once again, uh, for those of you who... Mike, Kevin, and... Mike, Joe, and Amber, Kevin doesn't really read books, are not used to the gore yet. I noticed, while reading the number ones without anybody telling me, ooh, this is gory, ooh, that is gory, I've become accustomed to it because Marvel's doing that. DC is basically just following what Marvel's doing. So, I actually am accustomed to the gore now. So I really can't say whether they're gory or not anymore because in my mind, it's just, that's the way comic books are now. So... There are certain things in, in certain issues you shouldn't show to little kids, but for people my age and for teenage readers, this is fine. Believe me, especially with the stuff on TV and video games nowadays, this is fine. Batman and Robin number one, once again, was awesome. Red Lanterns number one did not disappoint. I loved it. I am coming back for issue two and beyond. Green Lantern number one, once again, taking up right where it left off. It's just basically a renumbering. But it's the same exact thing. Everything still still holds true. And we're just continuing the story. I'll absolutely be coming back. I would say absolutely keep going with Green Lantern, guys. Suicide Squad, I'm on the fence. It depends on the next issue whether I keep it or not. Amanda Waller is now thin. Holy shit. Jenny Craig. Must have been Jenny Craig. <laughs> Grifter number one, once again, I'm also on the fence with... Uh, it depends on how the next issue goes. Because so far the story, I don't know. Superboy number one, I'm on the fence because I like the original Superboy. This remaking of him now, now he's, like, he was just created now. Yeah, either it's going to take a lot of getting used to or I'm just not going to like it. Amazing Spider-Man 669 was awesome. Fear Itself 6 of 7 was great. New Avengers number 16 was good. X-Force 15 was great. Dark and Dark Wolverine number 14 left me a little kind of, what the hell is happening? I kind of got confused. Uh, Spider Island, the Avengers one shot was good. Stay away. I'm staying away from the Ultimate Universe. And Starborn number ten was awesome, also. All right, guys. So this was episode 98. Two more to go. This weekend will be 99. Hopefully the comics will be on time. I'll see you guys in the next episode or the next video. Take care, guys. See you soon.